Please be seated before your maker. The title of today's sermon is The Grateful Servant. The Grateful Servant. What did I say? The Grateful Servant. I want to start from the altar. I want to start, as is the custom in our church, with our fathers in Christ, the shepherd of our church, Supriya Venerable, Supriya Evangelist, or our sister Venerable Supriya Evangelist, Julius Shebiova, and our grand patron, Supriya Evangelist Job, and all our elders, and my fathers in the altar, my mothers, who Jesus loves so much. My choristers, who imitate the voice of God through the angels. My colleagues, my brethren, and my sisters. I want you to know that God is not blind towards your labor of love in his house hold through rain, through pain, through tribulation, through difficulty, through upset, through unexpected things that happen in your lives. My Lord and my God asked me to remind you and to tell you he is not blind. He asked me to correct a false impression in your lives that you are working for God. No. God is working for you. It is a partnership. And when I was preparing this sermon on the grateful servant, the Lord asked me that we should sing a song together to remind ourselves of who he is and who we are before him. So I'm going to ask the choir please to just open him 622 for us to sing those four stanzas. Six, two, two. Let us stand, please.
a story about two Nigerian women. Their names were Sarah and Rebecca. Sarah and Rebecca were very good friends. They traveled from Nigeria to England on a six month visitor's visa. When they arrived in the United Kingdom, they managed to obtain employment doing cleaning work. The cleaning work was six days a week. The hours were nine o'clock in the evening until six o'clock in the morning. They only had one Sunday off in the month. The other three Sundays or four Sundays they had to work. At the end of the cleaning work at six o'clock, it's time to go home. They were tired, they were shattered. Once a month, Sarah would come to the church the day off, the Sunday she's not working. Sarah would pay her tithes. And when she'd pay her tithes, her prayer to God will always be the same. Dear Lord, please protect me. You know I'm not meant to be working in this country. But you know, Lord, I need this money to send back home to look after my parents who are elderly. Please protect me. Please look after me. She would pay her tithes. She would go away. Rebecca would finish work at 6 o'clock on a Sunday. But unlike Sarah, she wouldn't go home. She would catch the bus from the workplace to the church on Sunday, completely tired after the eight hours of work. She would come into the church, sometimes she would be sleeping. She is so tired. But even though she's sleeping, in her heart and in her mind, she's crying out to the Lord, now look at me, Lord. Look at how tired I am. Look at me. I am here before you. And as she's putting her tithes into the tithes box every Sunday, her prayer will be the same as Sarah's. You know I have elderly parents home. I have to look after these parents. Please protect me. Please look after me. Please protect them. This went on for eight months. In the eighth month, the owner of the building in which they, they worked called Rebecca and said, in the last eight months, I have noticed that you are always on time. Your work is excellent and you never complain. Whatever is given to you, you do, and you do it to the best of your ability. I have five other buildings in London. That's where it was at the I need somebody who I can trust to be a supervisor, because the previous supervisor has passed on. I want you to be my supervisor. I don't want you to clean anymore. But I want you to make sure that the cleaning that others are doing is like yours. The owner of the building did not say anything to Sarah other than carry on working as you have been working. 
when Sarah heard about the promotion that had been given to her friend, she was not pleased. In fact, she was angry and frustrated. She could not contain herself. Anonymously, that is secretly, she picked up her phone and ran the home office to report her dear friend, Rebecca, as being an overstayer. Today is not a sermon to tell you that God rescued Rebecca and she was managed, she managed through marriage to stay in this country permanently. That is not the sermon of today. I want to tell you more about Sarah. So having done what she did, she came to the church on her next day when her day off when she comes. And when she came into the church, the prophet called her. And you know the way that celestial prophets are, God will never show them the whole picture. He will only show them so that the person who is hearing the message will know that it's God talking to them. And the prophet called her and said, Sarah, my child, since you have been in this country, you have been making a prayer to me the prayer you have been making to me concerns your family back home. It concerns what you are doing by way of what you will eat and drink. The prophet never said double. He just said what you will eat and drink. And it concerns your security here in the United Kingdom. And the prophet asked Sarah, in the eight months that you have been in this country, have I not answered your prayers? Then Sarah had to say to the prophet, Yes, Lord, you answered my prayers. Then the prophet said, Then why have you done such a wicked thing in my sight? Oh, no, I'm not. Cain was the eldest of the two children. In every society, it's not Nigeria, no, but every society, the eldest is the heir to the family. He's the first child, he's the child that has rights. He's the child that should be honored. Sarah and Rebecca were laboring, were, um, laboring for eight months when the owner called Sarah. I called uh, Wendy, I'm going to call Rebecca. Thank you. Cain and Abel were laboring for nine months. Because if you look at Genesis chapter 4, verse 3, at the time they brought their offering before the Lord, the Bible says, in due season and in the process of time, it came to pass. So the process of time means that there had been a period of labor. The farmer will rear the sheep. The farmer will rear the chickens. It's not something that will happen overnight. And every day when the farmer is rearing his product, he's saying a prayer to God. Don't let the fox kill the chicken. Don't let the wolf kill the sheep. Let me have a good harvest. Just as you, when you go to work or you go to school, you are always praying to God every morning, let this day be a productive day for me. Let this year be a productive day for me. By the time I come to do harvest, let me have something good to give you. Sonny I did one of his records sang that Dear Lord, let us have money to be able to pay the harvest. Yes! It is the story of life! Oh, oh, you got it? Yes! 
Come here, are, are you going to be, are you going to be perfect? So, in life, we are always trying, we are always marking ourselves that we have progress. So, the time of harvest came. Abel had been laboring, growing, getting rid of the, the, the weeds, getting rid of those insects that will eat the, the vegetables and he's got a good crop. And when the time of harvest came, both Abel, the youngest, and Cain, the eldest, had good things. God had been merciful to them. As God had been merciful to Sarah and Rebecca. But what happened? Abel's heart was like Rebecca's heart. Because during the nine months period, he was not doing the bare minimum. Just as Rebecca did not do the bare minimum. In tiredness, stress of body, Rebecca carried herself to the church. And God saw her heart sleeping in the service. It didn't matter to God. God was looking at the heart, the effort. When the time came for promotion, God knew what he was doing. Abel took the best he had. The best that he had. He didn't say, I'm going to keep the best for me, for my parents, Adam and Eve, that we eat at which I'm going to give it to the Lord who gave it to me. But what did Cain do? The rotten fruit, the ones that had the maggots in them, the ones that hadn't quite grown properly, were still immature, those are the ones who broke before the Lord. The nine months that he had been toiling the ground, he had been watching his lovely fruit, thinking what a wonderful time I'm going to have for myself. And then he went and gave God the bare minimum. So which servant are you? Are you the grateful servant? like Rebecca, or are you the servant that does the bare minimum? The bare minimum. We like to sing a song in Celestial, particularly during Thanksgiving. Abraham's blessings are mine. Abraham's blessings are mine. Abraham do the bare minimum before God. The only thing Abraham wanted in life, the only thing he asked God for, only thing, one thing he asked God for, give me a child. Yes, you said I'm going to be this, I'm going to be that, you're going to make a gener you're going to make me a great generation. Give me a child. He was 75 years old when God called him, according to Genesis 15, uh, I think it's 15, Genesis 13. He was, he was 75 years old when God called him. And if you look at Genesis 15, we're not going to read it, but if you look at Genesis 15, The verse says, verse 1 says, God said to Abraham, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. What did, I, what did Abraham say to God? Look, he's all very well telling me all these things, you prophet. 
They're telling me this, you're telling me that. I want to be The thing that is in my heart, the thing that is bothering me, you're not answering, you're not addressing. Because in verse 2, Abraham said to God, what will you give me? What is it that you're telling me you're going to give me? You're telling me I'm going to be a great nation. I'm going to be the, the thing I want. The thing that is hurting me. I haven't got. He said, what will that give me seeing I go childless? And the servant is the person ruling in my house. We all know the story of Abraham. We all know that God eventually gave him the son. Even though he became frustrated, he listened to his wife like Eve, uh, Adam listened to Eve. I don't know what is wrong with us men who listen to women. And I read my Bible. It doesn't seem to end up very well for us. Abraham listened to uh, his wife, Sarah. And then Sarah was complaining that the woman is not real of the story. But where I'm going is that when you get to Genesis 22, when you see that Abraham's blessings are mine, now somebody read, please, verse 2. Then it says, God said to Abraham, Take now your only son. Yes? Pause there. There are some children we don't love because they, are, they misbehave. So if somebody says take them away and bring them back in, you don't even mind because there will be, be, be peace in the house. It's just like uh, in the church now, if somebody making trouble, eventually Baba Che will say to the chairman, can you find a way to just give us six months of rest on this person? So we can have peace in the church. But Abraham loved that one child Isaac. That is what the Bible says. So it's not a question of God asking him, to give something that was, a, that was worthless. God asked Abraham to give back to God the only thing that was important to Abraham. His one son. And what happened in verse 3? Without question, without question, without question, Yes, thank you. Abraham, without question, was ready to give God everything that he had. Not the bare minimum, like Cain. Not the bare minimum, like Sarah. One Sunday tablet a month. God didn't complain. She kept her job. But God is watching. He's not stupid. As was said in one of the previous sermons, being on the second is not what. Whatever you saw, you will read. And when we get to verse, that same 22, when we get to verse 16, what happened? The angel of the Lord called from heaven, called Abraham from heaven, and said, God is now saying by myself, Jehovah, the creator of heaven and earth, the most highest of all powers and authority. Swearing by himself. Come on. I have sworn. I have sworn. Said the Lord. Because you have done this thing. You have done this thing for me. You didn't, you didn't bring the bare minimum to me. You didn't bring the, the son of the enemy to me. You didn't bring the ram of the enemy to me. The most precious thing you have. He brought it to me. Then, as a result of that, what did God say in verse 17? In blessing, I will bless you. In multiplying, I will multiply you. Thank, thank you. Thank you, my brother. It, it, did, it, did it not happen? So when you are singing, Abraham, blessings are mine, be asking yourself, <laughs> minimum requirement are mine. <laughs> you should be asking yourself, are you doing the minimum before God? To put it in another way, our song 429 in uh, Celestial Church, okay, the second, the second verse, I don't want the first one. The, first, the second verse says, he will do the song that she shared. 